Cabinet Secretary Farida Karone has just appeared or has just arrived before Senate's Committee on Public, Account, Public Accounts and Investment. Uh, the matter in question is the controversial Raka land saga. Let's listen in. Introduction. Principal Clark. Yusuf Zen, Clark to the Committee. Charles Ngatia, Clark to the Committee. Robert Rock, Audio Officer. Patrick Murindo, Sergeant at Arms, attached to this committee. We have some special guests with us today. We have um, staff from the county assemblies who have come to Senate to benchmark. Nowadays, we don't have to go to the U.S. to benchmark. The counties come to the Senate to benchmark. And I want to recognize them specially. And uh, maybe just introduce yourselves. The uh, our visitors from the county assemblies. My name is Eli Klebendi, Cliffy County Assembly, Black Assistant. Good morning, my name is Bokayo Guyo, I'm Legal Counsel, County Assembly of Marsabit. Good morning, my name is Dorothy Chipta from Nandi County, Clerk Assistant. Good morning, my name is Judy Wahome, County Assembly of Nyeri, Clerk Assistant. Good morning, I'm Kenneth Langat, Legal Counsel from Promet County Assembly. My name is Emma Akiru from Busia County Assembly. I'm a clerk assistant. We are uh, very proud of our county assemblies, uh, not just the members, but the staff as well. And it is our responsibility as Senate to continue developing them. And we welcome them to uh, continue joining us for such benchmarking. I hope we'll also find one county uh, with which Senate can benchmark. I'm sure out of the 47 counties, there must be a few counties doing some great things that even senators can learn from. I think we've done introductions on our part. We also have members of the media. These ones are uh, 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 part of the arm of, <laughs> of parliament, and so there are many. We will not uh, introduce them individually, but you are welcome. I have seen the CS for Lance is here, heading a delegation. Please introduce your delegation. Thank you, Honorable Chair. My name is Farida Karone, Cabinet Secretary for Lands and Physical Planning. I will allow my staff uh, to introduce themselves and then we can proceed. Thank you. I'm Honorable Gideon Mungaro, uh, Chief Administrative Secretary, Ministry of Lands and Physical Planning. Uh, Dr. Maraguri, PS Lands. Okay, thanks. My name is Stephen Chege. Uh, I'm an advocate of the High Court of Kenya. I also work at the Ministry of Lands. I am a registrar. Thank you. Uh, oh, yeah, there's oh, someone. Okay. Good morning, everybody. My name is Anfred Ombima. I'm the parliamentary liaison officer of the ministry. Asante, that introduction was necessary for us to go on record. I want now members for us to go straight to the agenda and. Um, I uh, think the agenda number, is that number two? Number three, on meeting with the cabinet secretary and for Ministry of Lands. Members, you may recall that on 7th of May 2018, we wrote a letter to the cabinet secretary, Ministry of Lands, requesting the cabinet secretary to meet the senate session of uh, county public accounts and investments committee uh, for record purposes i will read the letter after which we will request the cs to respond as uh, 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 required uh, letter dated 7th may 2018 reference meeting with the senate session of county public accounts and investments committee reference is made to your letter uh, reference molpp L M O L P P A D M eighteen fifty seven dated twenty ninth March twenty eighteen. At a sitting of the committee held on Wednesday, second May twenty eighteen, the committee considered your advice as to why you could not attend the meeting as invited. 
The committee further noted that matters of custody of documents on land ownership and the policy on land matters fall within the mandate of the Ministry of Lands. The committee therefore resolved to invite you to appraise it on the acquisition of land parcel LR 78794 by the National Land Commission for Waraka High School and Drive-In Primary School in Waraka, Nairobi County. During this meeting, you are requested to appraise the committee on the following. One, previous and current ownership of land parcel LR number 78794. Two, whether there were any encumbrances on the parcel of land as at 19th January 2018. Three, whether the ministry has acquired ownership documents for part of the land that the government purchased for roads, that is 1.319 hectares, and the general service unit, 37 acres. Four, whether the ministry has acquired ownership documents for the 196 houses erected on the parcel of land, approximately 17.8 17 .8 acres, purchased by government and paid for in full through an agreement dated 18th August 1988 between the defunct Kenya Post and Telecommunications Corporation and the then permanent secretary in the office of the president and the policy regarding adverse possession and compulsory acquisition of land by government. This is therefore to invite you to a meeting of the committee to be held on Monday, 14th May 2018 in committee room 5, main parliament buildings at 10 a.m. Um, then the uh, usual salutations follow. Uh, CS, you obviously understand the background of uh, the matter that is before us because that was not the first time the committee wrote to you. There was uh, the initial invitation which you responded through your PS indicating that uh, the matters raised were out of your scope. The committee invited you, received another letter indicating that you were unavailable and were appearing before the National Assembly Lands Committee at the same time. We indulged you and invited you again today. We are glad that you are here. The issues that we want you to address are well listed in that letter. And uh, I think the, pub the background to this matter is in the public domain. What Senate is attempting to do, because this is a public accounts and investment committee, our greater interest is on uh, prudent utilization of public funds by governments, particularly at the county level. Uh, but we've got a broader responsibility to secure national uh, interest. We are not just interested in the formality of this transaction. We want to inquire into its wisdom, into its efficiency, and, to, and into its uh, probity. We also want to be sure that uh, when we make decisions, we provide precedents that will be properly grounded and that will guide this nation in future. Some of the issues we are dealing with are as a result of the transition from centralized to devolved governments. And some decisions have been taken in an, envi in an, in an environment where it seems that uh, there was a lacuna. And it is for us as parliament to contribute to that jurisprudence by guiding and uh, making proposals and recommendations that will help um, other institutions in future. To uh, just give the context, this republic, there could be about 45,000 public schools. These public schools built with public money over the years. At some point, Professor Ngeri built them when he was minister for education. It would be unfortunate if uh, the government had to buy back these schools. Many of us have contributed to construction of schools. And you'll find that uh, a school sits on land that has been contributed by members of the community. I know of a school that sits on land that was contributed by five different families that have never gone through the process of uh, administration and the process of transfer. What kind of precedent should we set for such cases in future? Because if the 45,000 schools, half of them did not have titles, and uh, they had to ask the government to buy back, then we'll not have enough money to feed uh, uh, this country. So that is a background. That's why we are seized of this matter. We have a standing committee on lands in Senate. And uh, we have been talking to the chair of that committee. We have agreed that uh, once we are done with our inquiry from that financial perspective, they will uh, pick it up uh, from where we've left. They will pick up our recommendations and they will pursue it to the conclusion that will be logical. The National Assembly Lands Committee is also looking into the matter and uh, being a standing uh, a sessional committee, no, it's not sessional, it's a standing, it's a, uh, uh, it's a sectoral committee. They are also focusing more on the land policy issues. 
So CS Karibu give us the, the, the answers to the issues that we raised and then uh, members will ask questions thereafter. If there's a document you'd like us to refer to, make sure it is circulated first and that members have copies. I don't know whether it is what I'm looking at. Is there any document that you have circulated? Uh, do we, will we need it as you present? Does everyone have a copy? If we have enough copies, let's circulate. If we don't have enough copies, then we can proceed and uh, maybe members can share. You are, you are making arrangements to make extra copies. O okay, members, since uh, CS does not have enough copies, let's just try and follow her submission uh, so that we can save on time. Okay, proceed. Thank you, Chair, and thank you for allowing us to come a bit late because we're held up somewhere. I am accompanied by senior staff from the ministry, so I will read my statement, and then if there are questions from members, I'm happy and willing to answer them. Thank you, Chair. So, Chair, to your first question on previous and current ownership of LR number 7879-4, I wish to respond as follows. According to records held by the Ministry of Lands and Physical Planning, Afison Export Import Limited and Hewland Limited are the registered owners of the parcel number LR 7879-4, having acquired it in 1981. Uh, Honorable Chair, the relevant documentation is on Annex Number 1. The background to this land, Honorable Chair, this is the land that was first registered under the Government Land Act of 1902. By an instrument of conveyance dated 1905, the Crown first allocated 1,000 acres of land to Arthur Edward Atkinson as Number 216, registered as Number 333, Stroke A2, Stroke 1905, the relevant entry, Honorable Chair, is on Annex Number 2. Through a conveyance dated 21st of February 1906, the land was conveyed to Alan Thompson and Harris Temple by an indenture dated 5th of October 1905. Registration number 38 stroke A2 stroke 1906. And the relevant documentation, Honorable Chair, is on Annex Number 2. On the 25th of March 1909, the same parcel was mortgaged to Ms. Gertrude Ge Gruhan as number 165 A5 stroke 1909 and the relevant entry is on Annex number 200 of chair. The land has gone through various hands and mortgages up to the late R.H.T. Ancock in 1921 and by way of letters of administration dated 30th of November 1921, the land was granted by the Supreme Court in Nairobi to, to Wilfred Arthur Radoff from the estate of Hancock, who was then deceased, as per the entry number nine of Annex number two. On the 19th of August 1925, Honorable Chair, the land ownership passed to Gladys Thompson for a consideration of 210,000 shillings, and that information is on Annex number two. The parcel changed hands by an indenture dated 4th of December 1958, registered in the Government Land Registry in Nairobi, on volume number 43, folio 302, stroke 1, between Gladys Thompson and Joreth Limited for a consideration. It was then transferred to Joreth Limited, and the entry is on Annex number 2 and Annex number 3 on the documentation honorable chair. The land is delineated and described in plan number 47389 as fee simple and subject to the provisions of the Government Land Act of 1982. This legislation has since been repealed on the board chair and replaced by the Land Act of 2012. Having bought the entire parcel of land measuring 168.5 acres from Gladys Thompson, Jorath Limited subdivided the parcel into four parcels. One parcel was sold to Hewland Limited as stroke 78, 79 stroke 4 at a price of 14 million and the total acreage was measuring 96 acres. That information, Honorable Chair, is on Annex Number 2, Entry Number 1, Volume N, 50, 1 Stroke 27 of the subdivision. 
Uh, see us just a minute uh, to get the annexes right. Yes. That one you said is annex two. The last one. Number twelve. Entry number one, volume number fifty. Folio. Ju ju just uh, for for ease of reference, just uh, help us to know which one. Reference. Because uh, annex two, uh, the last entry is uh, twenty-four. Is there? Just one moment. Just one moment, one robot chair. Annex two. Yes, that one. Just hang on, one moment, one robot chair. Is that the conveyance dated 29th day of December 1981? Just one moment. Yes, I think so. Yes, Honorable Chair. That should be it? Number 24. On, on this, uh, yes, Annex number 2. 24, two, number, number two. 1. No, sorry, that's 1958. Sorry. It must be the one dated 1981. Uh, yes, it is, because it was transferred in 1981. Oh, okay, we just needed to be sure that yeah. all the annexures are there. Yeah. We, we can proceed. Yes, yeah. So dated 1981, yes. So that is the history of how the land changed hands from 1902 to 1981 Honorable Chair. So that is the background for question number one. And there's no record from 1981 to date, uh, it's a uh, silent? No, we, when you search the land at the moment Honorable Chair, the land is owned by Hewland and the Africa Export Import. Those are the current owners. And the search is also annexed as annex number three. Chair, can, can probably for purposes of follow up, you said you said Judith or Juliet, Judith, 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 Limited. Yes. Had four parcels. Yes. And the, the one in question, the one that the chair is asking, went to Hewland Limited in 1981. It was only 96 acres. What happened to the other acres? The parcel, yeah. the total parcel by Joreth was 168 acres, 0.5. Four parcels of land. It was divided into four parcels. Yeah. One parcel was 96 acres. Yeah. The one parcel is the parcel in question, the one okay. we are discussing in the committee at the moment. Oh. The so other it doesn't say where the, the other four parcels go, went. Oh. If you ask for the records, Honorable Chair, yeah, I'm sure we can provide them. Oh, okay. But okay. we sought the records for the particular land in question. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Prof. Let me just inquire at this stage. When uh, it was divided into four yes. parcels, normally there's a requirement by the Commission of Lands then yeah. that a certain uh, acreage be given to social amenity facilities. Was that indicated in that subdivision at that stage in 1981 when it was being subdivided into four parcels or it was just a whole parcel? transferred to you, uh, to, the, to the, the, the current owners as, as stipulated in your statement? In our records, Honorable Chair, the parcel of 96 acres is transferred to Hewland and Africa Export in 1981. So then where, where does the schools, the two schools appear? At what stage do they appear in that land? Is this really the context in which we are looking at? I don't think I'm in a position to answer that question, Honorable Chair, because as you know, the schools uh, fall under the premise of the Ministry of Education. So I don't know at what point that uh, the permission was given for the schools to be built on the land, because in our records it is indicated that the entire 96 acres belongs to Africa, Hewland, and export. Uh, okay. Yes, I, I, the, the question by Prof, before we lose it, was that, was there a subdivision plan when we are moving from the 168.4 acres consolidated yes. to four different parcels, was there a subdivision plan? Y yes, Honorable Chair. And I think at some point in 1983, and I, I can provide the documentation shortly, this company actually applied to the city council to subdivide their land. But they di did disagree on the terms of subdivision. When they did disagree, then they did not proceed on the subdivision of now this parcel, the parcel... Th that is 1983. 1983. In 1981, yes. was there a requirement for a subdivision plan before the land was fragmented into four parcels? Yes, Honorable Chair. 
So there was a subdivision yes. plan at that point in time. Yes, it's the plan we referred to in the statement. Which was approved. Yes. Was there a requirement that uh, there is surrender to public utilities as part of that subdivision plan in 1981? It should have been honorable chair, but it's not in our records. The surrender is not indicated in our records, at least the records that have used to prepare the statement to the National Assembly. Uh, is it possible to get uh, records of the subdivision plan of 1981 before we go to 1983? Yes. 1981? Yes. I, I, do we have it today? We don't have it today, Honorable Chair, but we can get it. Uh, please uh, record it somewhere okay. because it's important for this inquiry. All right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Senator Kibiru? Uh, I just wanted to, to on a follow-up of that. At the subdivision in 1981 to four persons, I believe there should have been, there was a change of user. 